When did you start making music? I guess I started making music when I started violin lessons when I was five. But I probably tried to sing and stuff before that. I was a late bloomer. I started when I was seven or eight. <laughs> Just don't go that is quite. <laughs> so I started with cl uh, classical guitar, then learning the Suzuki method. How did you two meet? That's where that question was <laughs> Um We met in high school. We went to a music performance high school and um, Liv was in the year above me and I was lucky enough to walk around the corner at the right moment. Liv was rehearsing for a show that was coming up and had her like play fiddle and you asked me so thank you. <laughs> No worries. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the same version, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> that's not how I remember it. <laughs> no, that's right. That's, that's correct. I think maybe you asked me, but I don't know. Oh, I asked if you should join me for one performance. And then, and then I asked if we could be a band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably. I think something like that happened. Yeah. Who did you listen to growing up? Um... I remember listening to a lot of um, Australian artists like Paul Kelly, the Pigram Brothers, Tex Perkins, the Cruel Sea, Casey Chambers. Casey there, Chambers. Yeah. We um, really listened to a lot of the same stuff, I think. At least a lot of the same Australian artists. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where are you from? Melbourne. Yeah. Both Melbourne? Melbourne? Well, I grew up on Phillip Island which is outside of Melbourne, but um, from 16 onwards I was in Melbourne. So. And that's kind of when we started the band around that time. So. Okay. When do you feel you got your first break? I mean, probably the first time someone gave us a gig. Mm. And I think that was actually through maybe an old school teacher or something. They heard that we played and we played at the the Williamstown, Williamstown RSL, which we've never played at since, and I've never heard of any other gigs happening there, or at least um, uh, the music, the kind of music that we play. So maybe that was our first break. I mean, I think it's like a, a series of little breaks that happen all the time. Well, hopefully happen <laughs> <laughs> all the time. Um, I remember another significant moment for us, I think, was when we went to Folk Alliance International. This was like in 2015, mm -hmm. and we started the band in 2009, so it was well into our band life. Um, and we flew from Melbourne to Kansas City in Missouri, and we flew like five people over from Australia. We spent all of our savings to get everyone there and um, to get people to come to our show because all the shows were happening in the hotel room it's the way the festival was or the conference was set up um, to get people to come to our shows we wrote our names in um, outside in the snow so when people were going up the elevator and they looked out the window they could see our name written in like huge letters outside and I think from us doing that and people coming to our shows we had a series of little breaks that happened so that, that would kind of fast track a bunch of things for us. But you know, it's like there's all been a lot of little things happen and over the whole time. What is the story behind the name of your band, OPEP? Um, I guess it's partly our names, um, but we were also probably around the age of 16 at the time and we can't go backwards. <laughs> We are now. Tell tell us a bit about your album that is coming out. I wasn't thinking only about you. Um, it was written th from 2015 to 2018 when we were touring and in between shows and everything like that. So it was written all over the world, and then we went back home to Melbourne to record it, um, which was like a really cool grounding experience because we've been traveling so much um, 
and it comes out on October 26th. <laughs> yeah. What life events have impacted you and your music the most? I mean, I think at least for me, uh, personally, I don't know about you, Liz, but just having gone through our, like, from like being teenagers into a kind of adults, I don't know if, I don't think I'm fully an adult yet, but um, going through that time being in a band and, and touring and also trying to figure out, like, maybe to a degree, who we are, or I am at least, that's been something that's influenced by music. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of um, things that have happened in life that everyone experiences to some extent, like loss and um, changing relationships that have all influenced our music. Yeah. Oh. What are your interests outside of music? Um, I like just reading about new things, reading books, and um, hanging out with friends, like just really normal stuff. <laughs> I, like, I really love learning about new, new things and um, eating really good food. It's one of my favorite hobbies. <laughs> Me too, just normal things like, I don't know, I like drawing and watching documentaries and um, riding my bike, hanging out. What was the last show you went to see? And the last movie you went to see at the theatre? Oh. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, well, last night we went, to, as a band, we went to see A Star Is Born. Yeah, uh -huh. which was cool and relevant. Thing about the music biz. Um, yeah, we're doing some we're doing our research. <laughs> yeah, uh, which was really cool. I don't think we've ever gone to the movies as a band before, no. so that was that, that was really fun. We met, we met up with everyone yesterday. We had a rehearsal, and then we went out to the movies and bonded. And, and then we saw um, we supported Gregory Allen Icecoff just a few days ago, so that was the last show. And that was incredible. It was an awesome. incredible show. Yeah. It's like this full cinematic experience. Yeah. A very like lush, epic, and sensitive all at the same time. What is your favorite book? Um, my, I don't know what my all-time favorite book is. It's a hard one. Yeah. Well, my all-time favorite book is by... Um, I recently finished reading Murakami's What I Talk About When I Talk About Running, and that was really cool because I've, I've started running. So it was <laughs> nice to get some inspiration from him. But then I found this really great book um, a couple of days ago in San Francisco, which was um, a book on how to make your own, like a DIY living. So how to make your own, like everything, clothes and how to like garden and make shampoo and stuff, which is kind of cool. <laughs> Are you going to follow it? Well, I mean, I can't on tour, yeah, but it's hard. eventually I might. I mean, right now that's my favorite book because <laughs> I'm reading it. Yeah. I don't think I have a favorite book, but I'm just thinking about um, a book that I also bought in San Francisco but many years ago. Is a book called cabin porn and it's like <laughs> well it's a funny name but it's like a uh, book about people's like cabins kind of like this maybe but like living spaces small living spaces and and it's um, very inspiring maybe put a tiny house I know it's cliche but something like that I would want to build one day why is it cliche because it's like a whole movement now, but I mean, oh. at that, I mean, it's a good thing that it's a movement. But um, I like to think that I was ahead of the movement, but I probably wasn't. Well, thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs>